The Indian Ocean island of Diego Garcia is home to a U.S. air base that launched the most powerful bombers that were key to winning the war in Iraq. But it was also once home to an indigenous population who were summarily uprooted and shipped against their will to another island 1,200 miles away. So today, only military personnel and the workers they imported are allowed onto Diego Garcia. No outsiders can get in. But the real story is finally surfacing. On a string of beautiful coral islands in the middle of the Indian Ocean, America has built one of its most important strategic bases, Diego Garcia. Today, it's home to B-52s, and now for the first time, stealth bombers as well, all just seven hours flying time from downtown Baghdad. Supply ships as big as skyscrapers, loaded with tanks, weapons and ammunition for marine and army brigades, gathered there before the order was given to invade Iraq. Back in the 70s, when Diego Garcia became central to American military operations, James Schlesinger, who's now in the private sector, was Secretary of Defense. It is critical to American security and has steadily grown more critical. Indeed, it is one of the wisest investment of government funds that we have seen over the last three or four decades. And few would disagree. Four decades ago, when the United States and the Soviet Union were racing to get footholds in this region, the U.S. discovered Diego Garcia, a coral island in the middle of the Indian Ocean. The Americans had asked the British, their longtime allies who still had colonies in the region, to find them an uninhabited island for their base. It's always preferable not to have inhabitants around. It reduces any risk of uh, intelligence operations against the base and the possibility of sabotage. But there was just one problem. There were inhabitants on Diego Garcia, and they had been living there for more than 200 years. The children here do not have all the toys that town children play with. This old British newsreel shows a thriving community of about 2,000 people who worked on the island's coconut plantation. But the British didn't see that as a problem. To make way for the U.S. base, they simply moved all the inhabitants 1,200 miles away to other tropical islands, Mauritius and the Seychelles. Back then, when the island was a British colony, Marcel Moulinet managed the coconut plantation. It was he who was ordered to ship the people out. In order to have their base, what did the Americans want you to do with the island? Total evacuation. They wanted no indigenous people there. How did you evacuate? Well, when the final time came and um, the ships were chartered, they weren't allowed to take anything with them except the suitcases of their clothes. The ships were small and they could take nothing else, no furniture, nothing. The people of Diego Garcia say they left paradise and landed in hell when they were dumped here in the urban slums of Mauritius. They had brought no possessions, and as islanders who had lived off fishing and farming, they had no real professional skills. No one helped them resettle or paid for the homes they lost. They simply were forced to become squatters in a foreign land. Before the final evacuation, the British had cut off the ships that carried food and medicine to Diego Garcia. Jeanette Alexis's family was one of the last to leave. My father was told that we had to leave the island because the Americans were moving in and it wasn't safe to remain on the island anymore. They say they didn't force people off the island. I mean, if you stop feeding me, if you don't give me work, you bring in sheep and you tell me that this is the last trip, otherwise if I stay back, I will starve to death. What other force do you need to get me out? The islanders say the other force that got them out was fear when British officials ordered their pets to be exterminated. They were gassed with exhaust fumes from American military vehicles. It's hard to believe that, that people would do that. Yes, in fact it did happen and you can imagine the pressure that uh, put on the, on the population there. It was, uh, it was just terrible for people. 
When you boarded that ship, finally, for your last trip out of Diego Garcia, what do you remember? We were crying. We were hanging onto our mother's skirt, crying, because although we were very young, we understood that we were leaving something very, very valuable behind, and that was our home. And for the next 30 years, the world never knew what had happened to Diego Garcia's original people. No outsiders are allowed on to Diego Garcia, so this secret stayed hidden until one of the exiled islanders, Olivier Boncoul, started organizing his community. He was angry by the years of misery that his people had been forced to endure. Three of his own brothers drank themselves to death, dispirited by their poverty and unemployment. One of his sisters was so homesick that she committed suicide. It's very sad. This is why I will never give up. All the difficulty is because of the U.S. and the U.K. They have turned uh, people's uh, life in, into a nightmare. This is why so three years ago, Olivier traveled to London to take the British government to court. His big break came when he and his lawyer, Richard Gifford, found secret documents that had recently been declassified that described the agreement between the United States and British governments to build the base on Diego Garcia. Here we have the legal expert in the Foreign Office uh, in which he's got a paragraph headed maintaining the fiction. The fiction that Diego Garcia had no native people. These British documents show colonial officials thought that no one would notice if they deported the islanders. Were you surprised when you started digging at the memos you found between the Americans and, and the British? Uh, I, I find it rather shameful, yes. Uh, I'm, here we have a, a rather interesting little memorandum of the British government. There will be no indigenous population except seagulls. Another British document Weird. confirms that evicting the people and leaving the uh, island to the seagulls was done at the request of the United States. It reads... The United States government will require the removal of the entire population of the atoll by July. The Americans telling that to the yes. British. Yes, and the British were only too happy to oblige. And what did the British get in return for providing the Americans a population-free island? Polaris missiles for their submarines. The U.S. reduced the price by $14 million, or 5 million British pounds. Well, you have to understand that the, the stiff upper lips hardly quivered at the idea of moving the population. They didn't care. So five million pounds was a massive incentive con uh, compared with a very modest um, 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 conscience problem. Uncovering this paper trail brought Gifford and Boncoul a stunning victory. Britain's highest court ruled that deporting Diego Garcia's native population was illegal. But the euphoria didn't last long, because the court didn't propose a remedy, neither money nor what the people wanted most, to return home and the right to earn a living on the base. Do you think, given the security situation right now, the war on terrorism, do you think they will ever really be able to go back to Diego Garcia? The position of the islanders is that they never objected to the U.S. base on Diego, but the islanders are extremely bitter that uh, they are denied employment on the base, precisely because they come from there. Especially since the base employs several thousand civilian workers from other countries, like the Philippines. Benoit Emilien uh, used to recruit the, uh, those civilian employees. So that's me again with the commanding officer. Your job was to find workers to work on that top secret American base. Were native Diego Garcians ever allowed to go back and work there? Definitely no. Why not? I was given instruction to be careful. Uh, they don't want any, any kind of uh, claim or demonstration. And when Benoit tried to talk to his American friends on the base about Diego Garcia's original inhabitants, he found the subject was taboo. It's like this, they stay away like... Uh, they don't want to know? No, they don't want to know and they don't want visitors. When the islanders asked to visit their family graves, they were told in this letter from the British government 
that the U.S. had to grant permission. It reads, We have consulted the U.S. authorities who have confirmed that they cannot agree to it at the present time. So last August, the islanders appealed directly to President Bush. But the Bush administration said it was Britain's call. This letter reads, Because of the vital role the facility plays in the global war on terrorism, British authorities have denied permission to visit Diego Garcia. We concur and support the decision. Qasem Yutim, the former president of Mauritius, had written the letter to President Bush on behalf of the islanders. So both sides are essentially passing the buck. That's what they're doing. That's exactly what they're doing. I think that it is most, not only inhuman, but uh, illegal. They should never have been expelled from their land. We tried repeatedly to interview anyone from the British and American governments about this affair, but no one from the British Foreign Office, the US State Department, or the Pentagon would even talk to us. But Dan Urish did talk to us. Back then, he was the American commander on Diego Garcia. In retrospect, do you think that they were treated fairly, these people? You know, I have a great sympathy for them. I think uh, the British are the ones that are uh, probably legally responsible for it. Morally, the U.S. certainly has an interest in seeing that things are made right for the islanders. And until that happens, Olivier Boncourt, Jeanette Alexis, and the rest of the islanders say they'll never give up. Now they are suing both the United States and British governments for compensation and the right to return. It's an important base, I agree. But at the same time, they should have realized that people are, people are also important. Do you think you have any chance taking on America, taking on Britain? The Americans and the British all, always talk about the champions of human rights. There we are. What they did to us, they should rectify it. They should, they should look after us. You know, they should do what they preach.